I was doing a search for a good story to share with you on this Fireside Friday and came across one that reminded me very much of our dear friend Uncle Dave Stifler. He and his dear wife Aunt Ruth uh, have had an influence on thousands of people in uh, sharing the Lord and uh, Uncle Dave never tired of witnessing to the grace of God. I recall, for example, uh, one of my daughter's weddings. We had a reception at a hotel, and uh, nearby the hotel was a casino. And Uncle Dave had uh, used up all the tracks he had with the staff and others at the hotel, and he was going back to his car to get some more tracks when he came across a man sitting. uh, This was in the city of Niagara Falls, and he was sitting ashen-faced with his head in his hands, and Uncle Dave went up to him and said, Sir, are you, are you ill? And the man said, I've just gambled away my house, and I can't face my wife, and I'm considering throwing myself over the falls and committing suicide. And Uncle Dave had the joy of pointing him to the Lord Jesus. And the reason he had those golden opportunities was because he had a lot of other opportunities that may not have seemed to have been as effective, but he was at it all the time. And one of the things he objected to was this notion that only a few verses were, quote, good gospel verses. He said they're all good gospel verses. In fact, he would tell a story about a lady who had heard the gospel And um, she was very serious about getting saved, but she said, first, I have to go home. I don't know whether she was going to ask her priest or her preacher or her husband. And Uncle Dave read these verses to her from Galatians chapter 1. Paul writes, but when it pleased God who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace to reveal his son in me, that I might preach him among the heathen, immediately I conferred not with flesh and blood. And he explained to her that she had to do business with God and couldn't let any flesh and blood, any other people, get in the way. And it was this that caused her to bow her knees to the Lord Jesus and uh, receive him as Savior without asking for other people's advice. And so he was making this point that a verse that we would not consider a gospel verse was the very linchpin to her conversion. Now, of course, these verses don't include the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus or the sin condition of the human race and so on. She had heard the gospel, but it was that particular statement that caught her attention and that brought her to the foot of the cross. So in our story today, this is a, an incident in the life of a man named Henry Goodyear. He was a merchant living in London, England, many years ago, and he was inclined to scoff at the Bible and the claims of Christ, but he had a faithful niece who invited him to come with her to hear the word of God on a particular day. And uh, when they arrived, to her chagrin, the preacher was working his way through Genesis and had come to chapter 5. And if you're familiar with Genesis 5, it's a long list, a genealogy from Adam on. This man lived so many years, had sons and daughters, and he died. And the next one, and he died, and he died, all the way through the chapter. And the preacher felt it his responsibility to read the whole chapter before he began to preach on the subject. And she was just so grieved that here was this only opportunity to get her uncle out under the sound of the word of God, and it was Genesis chapter 5. Well, as it turned out, this phrase, and he died, and he died, rang like a bell tolling in his mind. As he walked home, his footsteps seemed to to toll out these words, and he died, and he died, and he died. And the next day at work, uh, the ticking of the clock and the scratch of his pen as he worked away on his business, he couldn't get away from it. And finally, 
This was the very idea that brought him to the end of himself, realizing that life was short and death was sure, and he wasn't ready to meet God. And so he found his way to the Savior and trusted the Lord Jesus. So, you know, many times uh, we're talking to people and a verse comes to us and sometimes seems to be obscure, doesn't seem to be a very good verse for the situation. But very often the Lord will use these surprising verses. I think of a young man who knew all the gospel verses because his father was an evangelist. And the verse that captured his heart, quoted by a young lady on a Christian website late at night, was, the very hairs of your head are numbered. And he thought to himself, how can I push away a God like that, who cares enough about me that he actually counts the hairs of my head? And it not only led to his conversion, but he called up his brother at another college and also his brother was saved. And so this is the amazing thing, that Genesis chapter 5 is just as much the word of God as John 3.16. And we should fill our minds with as much scripture as we can so that the Spirit of God can flash these scriptures on our minds and we can use them for his glory. So be encouraged. All the Bible is inspired. All the Bible is profitable. All the Bible is the sword of the Spirit, able to separate between the soul and the Spirit, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart.